It's going to be announcing as we go through the show. Okay. And I don't know if I get to change out my um, my headband as we go through, but what do you think, I think John? you just keep it on. You think? It looks good. Well, Wine Wednesday, Wacky Wednesday, Wine Wednesday. I think this Wednesday is all about me here today, huh? I, I'm, a, I'm good with that, and I, that was an impressive outfit. It, it's pretty amazing, isn't <laughs> Maybe it? Maybe I'll dress like that next time. <laughs> you could. You could. Denise could always use some volunteers, too, to help it, um, at the hospital. So you'd probably be somebody that I would gotcha. be for that. Thank you. So the wine rack is located on Frankfurt Avenue. It is, 2632 Frankfurt Avenue. And you have a lot of local wines you brought in for us to see today. Yes, we, we do a lot with local wines. And uh, I, we, I, I'm questioning constantly whether Kentucky can actually can make good local wines, uh, can make wines that compete with California and Oregon and Washington and France and Italy, and et cetera. And I don't consider myself a pitch man for the Kentucky wine industry. Uh, the wines have to be good. The products have to be good mm -hmm. for me to get behind them and to recommend them. But the fact of the matter is, Kentucky can make some very good wines, uh, as well as southern Indiana. And I brought some examples of those today, and I, I tend to prefer uh, the Kentucky wines that are using grapes that do much better in this part of the country. Sure. Instead of trying to copy California and France and doing Cab and Merlot and Chard, it's very hard to do those types of grapes here. Uh, the humidity is different, the temperatures are different, the soil is different. But there are a lot of grapes, uh, in particular like French-American hybrid grapes, uh, okay. that, that make, that turn out to be wonderful wines. And we like to introduce people to those. It's a good way for people to learn, you know, some new grape varietals and, uh, and f discover that they actually enjoy them. And some of these grapes have been around for a long, long time. Because yes. at one time, before Prohibition, Kentucky was a pretty serious... That's right. That's, that's exactly right. Back in the, say, 1850 era, mm -hmm. uh, Kentucky was the number three producing, uh, number three grape producing state oh. in, the, in, in the Union. And then Civil War obviously happened, and then a lot of the farmers just switched over to tobacco. And now, ironically, they're coming back around, and you're getting a lot of tobacco farmers growing grapes and making wines. And the, the industry is sort of in, in its new infancy. Okay. Uh, but so you brought in some uh, selections from around the state. I did, yes. I did. I brought uh, brought wines from several uh, that represent grape varietals that do well in this region and one grape is something called Vidal Blanc mm -hmm. and I brought two examples of that grape here uh, the first being from Smithberry Winery which is in Newcastle and Smithberry is our number one supplier for local wines okay. uh, and I love their Vidal Blanc. Vidal Blanc in terms of what it tastes like which is all people really care about is what it tastes like and how much it costs. Uh, Vidal Blanc is a lot like a Riesling uh, kind of a okay. light to medium sweet Riesling, okay. uh, but they have really bright acidity, so it keeps the wine real lively. It doesn't come across as cloying or, or too rich. Uh, they have a lot of like melon and um, hmm. a little bit of citrusy that almost has like a tangerine aroma to it. You're making my mouth water. <laughs> and they're great <laughs> summer wines. Okay. Uh, so I have one from Smithberry in Newcastle. This one is from Acres of Land, and Acres of Land Winery owned uh, by Lowell Land is in okay. Richmond. Okay. Very similar to the Smithberry, but a little sweeter. Okay. Uh, this is an example of a little bit drier wine. Uh, it's called, uh, it's, a, it's basically a Saval, uh, and this is from Huber. Okay. Um, a little, almost effervescent. It's almost like a, a Portuguese Vino Verde. Oh, you can almost see it in there. You can. You can almost see those bubbles in there. But that's yeah. a Saval Blanc. And then the next one is a Tremonet, and this is uh, very similar to a Gewurztraminer. And this is from Horseshoe Bend, which is out in more central part of the state, around Bardstown. Okay. Uh, just an off-dry white. I uh, have here something that I'm going to pop open if I have time real quick. Okay, you got All about right. 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Pop and pour. All right. This is, this is one of my favorite <laughs> local reds, and this is something called okay. Smithberry Burley. So this okay. is a blend of Munson and Norton, and I think makes a pretty compelling case for a dry red wine made in Kentucky. Okay. While we drink, Denise, what's coming up next? Up next on Live from 725 South Floyd, we are celebrating National Ice Cream Month with Bluebell Ice Cream. And Jeffrey Lee has our 725 Music Review.